All right, so hi everybody. Um, I'm Louise Bowler. I'm a research data scientist from the Alan Turing Institute's Research Engineering Group. Um, I'm working on a project called QUIP together with a big team who I'll introduce properly later. Um, but I'm joined on this call by Oliver Strickson and Camilla Rangel Smith. Um, I'll be handing over to them later on in the presentation for the various part, different parts of the demo. Um, so we're going to be telling you about the QUIP project, which stands for Quantifying Utility and Privacy Preservation in Synthetic Datasets. Um, so it's a project we've been working on for a, a few months now. Um, still very much a work in progress, but we're really excited to share what we've been getting up to so far. So the problem that we're tackling in QUIP is that sensitive data sets are often not accessible enough. Um, and so when that's the case, we can't make the most effective use of them. So to think of like the most obvious ones, you've got healthcare data. Um, there's a lot of things that would be interesting to data scientists um, and, and researchers. So thinking about new treatments for things, um, or even just analysis of what's going on in A&E, can we improve waiting times? Is there any analysis we can do on that? Um, then that can contain things like um, details of people's medical conditions. So it might be things that people don't want to be made public or they don't want to be linked back to them. Location data is something that we share with certain companies quite a lot. Like a lot of people use fitness trackers or they'll use Google Maps or the transport apps. Um, and while you might think in some cases you're not giving that much away, in aggregate, that can tell you things like where your favorite locations are, where your home is, where your work is. And so those types of data sets can't often be made public um, very easily. The census is one of the most detailed um, data collection exercises that ever happens, really. Um, it's a, a massive collection of data from every household in the, in the UK. Um, but to release the micro data for that is a very tricky process. Like to do that, you have to be in um, to go through a lot of processes to make sure that you're going to handle that data safely. You have to do it in, in a contained certain area and they'll only release the more aggregate um, scales of that data to the public. And there's also financial data. So this might be things that are commercially sensitive. People don't want to be shared. Whereas for researchers, we really want to be able to work with this type of stuff. And um, so in Quip, we're exploring ways that we can um, work with the, these data types more easily. So there's quite a few ways um, that you can share aspects of data, even if you can't share the full data set. So you can do things like summarize where you're releasing averages. You can sample where you're releasing just certain parts of the data that you've collected rather than the full data set. Um, you can alter the data, so you can perturb it, so change it a little bit, make it less easily easy to link to a certain person. Anonymization or pseudonymization will take out various aspects of the data in order to make it safe to release. Encryption, um, there are various things that you can do to either lock the data away or to do analysis on encrypted data. That's a really tricky thing to work with. So what we're looking into is data synthesis. We're trying to synthesize new data sets that are based on existing data sets, but that don't contain the same individual records that were present there. So the hope of this is that you can release a synthetic data set to the public, even if you can't release the original. So the reason why we're sort of treading quite carefully um, in this process is because re releasing data is something that people want to do, but then things can also go wrong in that process. Um, so this is building a bit on what Becca was saying in her keynote yesterday, in that you can sometimes think that data is anonymous, but actually when you combine it with other data sets, it isn't. Um, so there was a case um, quite a few years ago where Netflix released it, um, a data set of movie ratings um, and the times at which various customers have made those ratings. And they did this for you know, quite a, a nice reason. They wanted to give it away to researchers to try and come up with um, new recommendation algorithms. This was a data set people could you know, really sink their teeth into and have a go with. And while this data set on its own was, was you know, anonymized and, and safe to release, that could be combined with other data sets that together would yield more information about the users. So what some researchers from the University of Texas Austin had done is they combined the Netflix data with data from IMDB, the Internet Movie Database. And what they could do there was work out which users have been making these ratings. And so then, they, then if people had certain information on their IMDB profile, that could then be linked to their entire Netflix history. So this didn't hit everybody in that data set because you still had to have um, your data on IMDB and have been included in the Netflix sample. But for some of those people, yes, they could have been identified. And then there was also a case, um, to go back to the medical case again, um, where the Australian government had released some data from um, their Medicare program. And what had happened there is that they had released some data about uh, costs and treatments, and then they had encrypted um, the patient IDs. So they never put the patient names out there. They had unique ID numbers and they'd encrypted them. 
and then done the same for the provider IDs and encrypted them. So thinking all's well and good here, but then some researchers from the University of Melbourne were able to get, get around the encryption on the provider IDs and then get back some of the, um, the identifiers for that. They didn't go any further and look at the patient IDs, which were encrypted by a different method, um, which shows that even with you know, government support, it's sometimes still possible to get things a little bit wrong. So what our focus is, is on exploring methods that people can use to generate synthetic data and looking at ways of evaluating how well that process has been carried out. So we're very sort of keen to emphasize here, we are not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're trying to use existing libraries as much as is possible um, to do both the synthesis and the evaluation tasks. And the evaluation tasks that we're really interested in is these two questions at the bottom of the slide. So the first question that we're asking is, how well is an individual's privacy maintained after the synthesis process? And to sort of keep this a bit shorter, we'll often refer to that concept as the privacy of the synthetic data set. And the other question that we're interested in is how well is the synthetic data suited for the original task? Um, so um, this is related to if the researcher is asking a question, you want the data that you're generating to still be suitable to, to deal with that, with that research question. And we refer to that as the utility. So overall in this project, what we're, what we're doing at the moment is we're evaluating how well each of these various data synthesis methods can preserve an individual privacy and the utility of that, that data set. And then we want to explore over the coming months, like whether we can um, generate synthetic data sets from data that wouldn't otherwise be able to be released and whether we can explore, is this something that we could look at releasing in the future? And a goal for further, further down the line is to understand what uncertainty we introduce by using the synthetic data as opposed to um, the original raw data. So there's a really big team of people behind this project, um, a lot of whom are on this slide here, and then we've also been in touch with various collaborators from other institutions as well. Um, so the group of us highlighted here are from the Alan Turing Institute's Research Engineering Group. So we all come from various different backgrounds and specialisms, um, but what we're very keen on is building uh, reusable and robust tools to help in data science problems. So we've been working on the Quip project and trying to produce a, um, a pipeline um, that's easy for the user to get into and that can be applied to lots of different methods. Um, so the team's headed up by um, our group lead, Martin O'Reilly, and then we've got Oliver, uh, Camilla and myself who are giving the presentation today. Um, so in terms of our other collaborators, we've got um, Sebastian Vollmer, um, who's a Turing Fellow and is also affiliated with the University of Warwick. Um, he does a lot of research using healthcare data. So from his point of view, he's really interested in finding, in sort of easing the process of working with healthcare data. So while the original data might have to stay a lot down, could the researchers he's working with maybe use some synthetic data to do um, prototyping of their analyses and then take that back and use it, apply it to the, um, the original medical data sets. And then we've also got three collaborators from the University of Leeds who are also fellows of the Alan Turing Institute. So Alison, Nick and Nick all have backgrounds in geography and social sciences. So they're coming more from the um, census um, type data sets, transport data sets, things to understand how, how people go about um, using various services um, and how people use transport systems around the country. So I've talked a lot about synthetic data generation methods without really going into the details. So I'll give you a brief rundown on some of the methods that we're looking at. And a few of these will go into a bit more detail when we get to the demo section later on. Um, so these are the things that we've been looking at at the moment. Um, so the model-based synthesis um, process is where we want to build up a model to describe our data. So this is generally taking um, a Bayesian approach. So we'll define that, how our variables are related to each other. And once we've built that model, we can then sample from that model. And those samples will be related to the original data, but they're not exactly the same. And that's what we mean when we're saying um, synthetic data. The next two methods, iterative proportional fitting and simulated annealing, are both reweighting approaches. So you quite often see these where we're looking at um, population level data. So it's quite common to get a sample of a population over a large area, but we want to make that population more specific. So say if we have a town where the population is quite elderly, but we have um, a lot of individual level data of a more general population of any age, we can sample from that population, pulling out on average people who are a bit older and then generate an individual level data set for that area. So in that respect, we're not taking um, 
real individuals, we're sort of simulating um, a population that can be used for, for um, various analyses. So iterative proportional fitting is a deterministic method, simulated annealing is a prob probabilistic method, and there's a few more that you can also um, combine into those data sets, into those uh, methods. The final two on this list, generative adversarial networks and variational autoencoders, are deep learning methods. So in both of these models, we supply data to the models and they will learn how to generate things that will pass as examples of, the, of, those, um, of those data sets that we provided as inputs. Um, so we'll come on to a few of those in more detail later on. And I also mentioned privacy and utility metrics, which is what we use to actually analyze how well we're doing in our synthetic data generation process. So utility can generally be thought of as quite analysis dependent. What we want to be able to do is to have comparable distributions of our real, of our real and synthetic data. So if you think about say, the distribution of, just to give a very rough example, like people's height, you'd see like an approximately Gaussian distribution in that. We'd expect to see that in both synthetic and real data sets. And we'd also expect correlation structure to be preserved. So if you're looking at relationship between height and weight, you'd expect to see the same linkages in the synthetic data sets as in the original. And we're also very interested in making sure that our synthetic data is suitable for the same task as the original data was. So if we're doing a classification task, we expect to see similar levels of accuracy at that task with both the data sets. Privacy is a little bit different from what we've been looking at so far. Um, how you quantify privacy is often very dependent on the method that you use to generate the synthetic data in the first place. Um, so differential privacy um, is a technique that you can apply or that you can look at um, in reference to perturbed data. So if you have a data set, you're effectively saying, if I include an individual or not, it shouldn't really make a difference. So if in, in that respect, your presence in that data set wouldn't matter. And the other two examples here relate to cases where the data is partially synthetic. So if, you, if a record had been generated synthetically based on um, some data you contributed, could you reasonably deny that your, your data was used for that, for that purpose? So could it have been somebody else's with a fairly equal probability? And if so, we can say that method's fairly private. So to put that into a graph instead, um, there's this nice one from a paper from 2015. Um, they've got data utility on the x-axis and the amount of privacy um, that the method contains on the y-axis. The data that comes in, you can expect will be sort of down here in the maximum utility. It's useful for the purpose that you want, that you gathered it for, but it doesn't necessarily have any, any privacy attached to it. Um, and then if you imagine completely messing up that data, you alter all the numbers, you alter all the values. It's then totally private. You can't tell who it's come from, but it's also no use to you at all. And so the ideal situation over here is going to be incredibly, incredibly hard to get to. So realistically, you're looking at something, some acceptable trade-off being along this, this blue line here in the schematic. And in QUIP, what we're trying to do is provide you with methods to work out where you are along this line and to work out where you should be if you want to release your data. So at this point, I'm going to pass over to Camilla, who's going to talk about some of the methods in a bit more detail. So I'll stop my screen share now and let her take over. And I mute myself. Okay. Uh, are, can you see my screen? So. Okay. So yeah, as Luis said, uh, we are we, we want to build a tool that is gonna take a different type of methods of that generated synthetic data, and then we can evaluate kind of the performance of the method. So that's what, what we are actually doing and what we want to show you today in our, in our demo. So the general idea is, okay, we have this tool that a user can give uh, its private data that they want to be released and uh, generate um, uh, synthetic data based on different methods and different parameters of the method. And then he can evaluate how well the different methods are performing with respect to each other and their data using this privacy and utility metrics. And also in the future, it's still not uh, the case right now. We also should be able to understand a little bit better um, the uncertainty is being in, in, included into the data by synthesizing it. So if we go to the tools, what we are currently uh, building, we call it like the quick pipeline. And so it's, it's a package that you can find it openly in, 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 a, in the GitHub repo that you can see here in the link. And 
what the, the idea generally of the pipeline is that well, you have your data sets and we have a, 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 a number of methods and you tell the methods or you to tell the pipeline which, for example, what, which kind of columns you want to synthesize on your data set and also how do you want to configure your model depending on what the model configuration needs. And then this uh, pipeline will generate synthetic data, but also will give you what's the value of the privacy you know, and the utility. And you can do that a bunch of times, iteratively changing different configurations, changing uh, models. And so, so it's, it's kind of like a, a tool that will help us a benchmark and understand better the, 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 which will be the optimal uh, method uh, for your data set and for your particular problem. So, for in, in order to show in this particular demo, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about each one of the subsets that we're going to show you on the demo. And so, if we start with the data that we're going to show you in this demo, well, we cannot show any real uh, uh, sensitive data because, it, of course, it's against all the rules. And so. And also because we were developing uh, the, the pipeline, we wanted to kind of have control over everything. So we kind of created our own mock sensitive data. So it is not real data. And this was inspired in a tutorial that we saw from the Open Data Institute where they kind of generate INE admissions data that will contain like pretend personal information such as like patient ID, postcode, uh, treatment, uh, condition that the, the person has, uh, age, et cetera. So, this is kind of, I'm showing you here an example of how the data will look like. And so we use this data set then to test and to, and, and, and to build the, the quick pipeline. And it's the one we're going to be using for the demo. So for the methods, we also, we have explored a, a, a number of methods. And I think Luis kind of gave a good overview of the, generally of the different type of methods that we can have for generated synthetic data. But for this particular uh, demo, again, we decided to use some methods that, uh, that, that we understand and that we can then easily uh, compute uh, utilities and privacy. And so we are using a, a model-based synthesis and the, uh, 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 the model-based synthesis in this case is like uses a director's a cyclic graph that uh, will represent the relationship between the variables in a data set, as you can see in the figure in the right as an example. And so we will train a model uh, for each variable using the data and like, from the training you will get well, what are, the, what are the, 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 the strengths of the relationship between the variables. And then we will use the, the model to predict values for a synthetic data set uh, based on seed values and other values. And we can do this several times and so we can measure kind of the uncertainty that we're putting uh, um, uh, by, by, by creating the synthetic data set. So in a better example, a more clear example, so let, remember that we have this a and &E data set. So we decide to, uh, have some entries that we're not going to synthesize and we're going to use a seed uh, to then synthesize other variables so for example in this case we are not synthesizing age and gender but uh, based on the model that has been fitted to the data we can then predict the time in INE and, &E and, and, and the hospital for example uh, uh, based on the seed uh, uh, variables. So now that we have this we have now synthesized a number of columns from our data set and so we have a new uh, hopefully more, more, more private uh, and synthetic data set, we want to then estimate then the utility and the privacy, right? So for the utility metrics, uh, Luis also gave a, an overview of what we can do. And th there are a number of things, it depends on what the task that you want to perform. But a very simple, uh, like first level task that we can check is that uh, we can use a, a bunch of uh, machine learning classifier algorithms to measure how well we can, for example, base in, in the other features that we have uh, synthesized, how well can we predict a, 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 an extra feature on, on the data set? And so we can do that for both the, the real data set and the synthetic data set and compare the performance on both on the holdout uh, example that we have uh, 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 in both cases. Uh, so yeah, so, so in a perfect scenario, we, the, the two will behave perfectly the same because it will be very, very similar, but of course that's, that's not going to happen. And 
that moves us as how, how different can, can this get will depend then a little bit more on the privacy side. And so in to measure how, how private the data set is, we, can, we, we, we implemented a measurement of the disclosure risk. And so for the disclosure risk, uh, we have to have in mind that uh, that there will be kind of an intruder, let's say. They will have some data from the data set, uh, from the real data set, and it will have some data, for example, that we don't, we haven't released. So in this particular case, where we have a name, age, gender, and, a condi and the condition, and let's say that the name we haven't released, it. we have synthesized a couple of variables like age and condition, and we haven't synthesized, uh, well, sorry, we have synthesized age and gender, and we haven't synthesized the condition. And so the intruder has the names and has the, the real age and gender. And so we, to estimate the disclosure risk, we cannot see what's the probability of the intruder matching the information that he has with the synthetic or, or the release data that we, that we are producing. So for example, in this case, we have Maria who is uh, 40 years old and uh, is, uh, is female. And we can then try to see here, like, well, how many cases we have that will, that will coincide with this. So we have three cases and, uh, and we know that then the probability of matching is at least uh, is 33% in this particular case. And so then we have Ben, for example, whose age is uh, 33 and is a, is a male. And so the probability of, of matching Ben is, is, is practically, um, Zero is zero because uh, the, the, as, the, as we have synthesized this column, there is some noise there, so it's not really we cannot really match with Ben. We will be matching with Mohammed. So we do this iteratively, and on there are also some assumptions of what the kind of data that the intruder will have, and we can estimate that disclosure risk. So we cannot. Uh, keep talking about uh, privacy with uh, mentioning differential privacy, which is a mathematical definition of privacy. And, and an algorithm that will analyze an, a data set and compute statistics about it uh, will be differential private if by looking at the output data set, we cannot tell if any individual data was included or not in the data set. And so they were, the guarantee for a differential private algorithm is that the behavior hardly changes when you remove uh, uh, individuals uh, from the data set. So an example from that, uh, we can see in the figure uh, in the right. So let's say that in blue, we have the original data set, like the, the blue distribution is the original data set, the, the yellow one is the synthetic one. And the difference between the distribution is kind of gonna be bounded by this uh, epsilon parameter that is the one that's gonna tell us like, that was the differential, uh, how, how differentially private is the data we're releasing. And so, of course, the, the, the larger the ratio, the larger just the difference we're gonna see, the more private the data set is, but then the utility will suffer because it's not gonna perform well in the task that we are gonna be measuring in, as I described in the last slide. Another, so another uh, privacy metric that we can measure that we found uh, in, in a paper that is uh, linked here, we thought it was interesting, is called the plausible deniability. And it's kind of similar to the disclosure risk measurement, but, in, in, in the way that he's trying to see how many seed entries can create a, 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 a row that we see, a synthesized row. And so you can request your release data set that at least a K, for K is the parameter number of uh, seeds will have to be linked to every release row. So that's kind of a, 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 a will be a measure of, uh, of, of privacy. And then uh, this paper shows that if you put some noise into this K uh, value that we're asking to, 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 to uh, as a measure of privacy, if you put some noise on it, you can also make that this algorithm is also differentially private. So we also, we also were playing with this and implemented this into our pipeline. So now I'm gonna let, leave you to Oliver, who is gonna show you the actual uh, 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 pipeline that we built and uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, oh, so uh, I actually want to talk about that slide a little bit, but maybe I can maybe I can share share my screen. Bear with me. Uh, is that does that work? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Um, 
Yeah, so the, so the demo, so um, yeah, just the last 20, 25 minutes then, uh, we're going to run, just quickly run through what we've, what we've done so far. As um, Louise and Camilla said, we've, we've really built this, this pipeline that brings together a variety of different techniques, both the synthesis techniques and the metrics for evaluating utility and privacy uh, by, by the definition we gave. Um, so we, we haven't really we haven't really produced anything we haven't really produced any new techniques as such, but rather brought together these different these different techniques. And well, one one aim really was to to put a relatively uniform front end on that and um, uh, yeah allow people to run these in a, in a uniform way and and eventually to kind of gather useful insights from that. Many of these methods are quite kind of quite technical. They involve setting various different parameters and understanding understanding what the implications of those and what those means might be a little dif difficult so another aim of the project is really to present that information and um, make sure that um, or can help people understand understand what, what they're doing and what the implications of these things are um, so anyway the, the diagram on the screen is just a, a little um, um, fl flow chart of the, of the method that we're going to we're going to go through and it's 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 quite a it's a quite a simple sort of file based approach you just you know you you, you start with a pipeline and, and what we're going to see is you just you just type make and then it will build you some synthetic data in fact what it does is take this um this input file that describes a run takes the data set that you tell it in the input file and then builds some synthetic data as part of its output and also some um scores that it computes for how, for the utility and also for the privacy. Um, so I'm going to share now a going to share now another window which is this one. Okay you should, should see my, my browser window. So this is just the quick pipeline um, repository that we, meant, we mentioned earlier. This is this is sort of where, where we've been working on it. Um, and the, in the README, there's there's some information about the project. There's that diagram we just saw. Some instructions about how to run it and so on. Um, really, though, the um, uh, in interesting thing we can do is is that we've we've put this binder button. So. Um, Binder is a is a service that that lets you um, spin up a, a notebook server based on any any GitHub repo. Um, so by, by clicking that button, we're we're in a moment going to end up with a with a notebook running there. That's on the that's on the version of the of the uh, of the repo that you can see yourself. So if you want to follow along or if you want to try this in in, in your own time, then then just just click the button. You'll get a you'll get a notebook server with all the dependencies there and so on. Um, so now, now we've got this, now we've got this notebook server. Uh, I'm just going to point out, point out um, a, a couple of things. So, so we, we mentioned there's, there's a, a, a data set we're using. So they're all in here. Oh, sorry, that was the, that's the wrong place. Um, the data set we're going to use is actually in here. So this is, this is the one that, that Cam Camilla mentioned. It's a, a CSV file with um, with some mock NHS A and E admissions data. Um, there's also the inputs to our method, which are in which are in here. Currently, we've got these three examples. We're going to make another one as part of this demo. Um, and I'm going to need a terminal, so I'm just going to start our studio um, to to get a terminal. We're not. We yeah. We're just going to interact with it with the with the shell. But it turns out there's this convenient convenient terminal. Um, just to save a little bit of time, the very first thing I'm going to do is just run make and get that get that started, and then we're going to we're going to go go back and and actually carefully work work through an example. Um, so in order to run our pipeline, we need an input file. Here here are some example input files, but let's let's make a new one. Um, and we're going to call this 
yeah, we, 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 we had that, those, those three other ones. We're actually going to introduce another one that's very similar to the other ones. Uh, this is just a JSON file, so let's make it um, our, our, our um, root uh, object. And the, the, the structure of the file looks a little bit like this. We have to, we have to give, pass it an option to tell it we want to actually do the run. We pointed at the data set that we just saw and we're going to use synthpot, which is an R package um, for doing data synthesis. Um, this uh, synth synthpot needs some needs some parameters, so let's let's give it those. And I'll, I'll come come back and describe these parameters in a little in a little more detail um, in a, in a moment. But um, one one thing to note about synthpop is it is it does it synthesis sequentially. So we, you start off by sampling. From from a column which is the, the fifth column. I can't remember actually what that was in the in the data set. Um, but you, we say let's sample from that column, and the empty strings there just mean just pull that pull the rest of the record. So this this synthesis is actually not not really a synthesis at all. It's just sampling just sampling from our data. Um, we we hope this means a couple of things. One is um, one is uh, it's it's if we if we evaluate the privacy of it, it's not going to be very private at all, or it, it, it didn't ought to be because, well, we're just releasing all the records as as they are, possibly in a different order. And but we we do hope that it's it's quite useful. That is, we're we we're going to evaluate the utility by um, performing a particular classification task. Um, in fact, we're going to see if we can. We, we're going to see if we can predict um, someone's age bracket given their given their the time they spend in A and E. Um, so we, we hope that in in this particular case, because we're just re releasing the original data, you do you do just as well using our synthetic data as the original data. Um, so now I now I have a now I have this this input file. Save it. Uh, let's go back to the terminal and see see how we're getting on. I, I know kind of what to look for here, so we, I can I can say already that we're we're um, we're we're nearly nearly there in 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 the terminal. Well, this is this is nearly finished running. Um, by typing make there, we just ran the synthesis, and the, you know we ran each step of the, each step of that of that pipeline. Um, okay, that that's going to take a little bit longer by the looks of it. But while while we do that, let's have a look at the other. Let's have a look at the other input files. Um, so in this in this synthesis, um, it's it's very similar to before. But in, in addition to sampling from the fifth column and, and copying the the other columns as they are, um, in, instead of instead of just sampling from the first and last columns, I'm going to use um, this this cart method, which is a in in synth proper. Um, Classification and regression trees, so just this sort of decision decision tree based synthesis. Um, so I'm doing that on two columns. Um, in this in this other synthesis, oh sorry, that was the wrong one. In this other synthesis task, I'm going to sample from. I'm going to do, use the uh, this this cart method on four columns. So I'm so I'm synthesizing four four columns. Um, and in the final in the final one. I've got sample everywhere. So sample everywhere just means independently sample from each column. So um, in 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 some yeah in in some sense this is this you, you might have some privacy concerns about that in that we if if you if you care about individual values being released um, the, the method we've used to assess this disclosure risk record matching method um, shouldn't pick up on that because. Um, the, it's, it's the the combination of the, the combination of different uh, fields that that, that matter. Um, of course, by sampling each column independently, we've lost any kind of correlation structure. So, um, in in this case, it should it should do relatively poorly um, when we evaluate its utility. Okay, let's see how the build is getting on. Um, Seems to be a little stuck.
well, while, while that's while that's running, let's let's look at the output that it's produced so far. Um, oops, sorry, that's the wrong place. Synth output. So it's so far producing these disclosure risks. These are the um, this is just uh, the the um, the output of the of the um, privacy metric, the disclosure risk. And we'll we'll get one of those for each for each of the runs. Okay, so it is it is making progress. I think at this point there's very little I can do apart from apart from let it run. But I hope it shouldn't be too much longer. I should say where we what, what we what we're doing with this example is really we're, we've run it on four very similar examples, and so what, what it would be very nice to do is to produce a to we we, we said before about producing a or assessing the trade off between utility and, and privacy, and and perhaps perhaps visualizing that. Um, so by running these four very similar examples and, and producing a, a privacy score and a utility score for for each of them, um, we we hope to be able to 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 plot this and see if see if um, we get what we expect to. And now it's on to the now it's on to the um, utility. Okay, so while while that's while it's doing that, um, I will start making making the the notebook that we need. So let's let's try and let's try and produce the visualization that we, we want to. I'm just going to import a few things. Taking a while because it's competing with the uh, synthesis itself, and setting setting the the where to pick up the output from. And we're just going to we're just going to pull pull in the the privacy and utility scores into a, into a couple of lists. I think before I do this, I do need to wait until it's finished. And that's okay, so that that was the the first handful, and then the one that I just the one that we just made. Uh, just just now, I can I can set that running. Um, maybe maybe while that's running, I can actually just sk skip ahead a little bit and and talk about um, um, talk about uh, what a, a particular so a few particular challenges we faced. Um, so I, I think the 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 biggest challenge really was thinking about privacy. So. He, I think privacy is a uh, privacy is quite a difficult difficult topic anyway. Um, I, I mean, as as we've seen in those examples, you can you can um, you can get it wrong very easily, and it it might not be obvious that you've got it wrong. Um, I th I think it, there's there's quite a few methods that that have been developed to assess privacy, but not all of them work very well in the particular setting that we have. Um, in particular, we've we've got this very data-driven setting where we want to 
we want to pull in methods and almost treat them like black boxes. And that means we have some original data we can use and we have some, um, we have some synth synthetic data. And actually to, to, make a, to make an assessment of privacy just based on those things turns out to be, turns out to be quite hard. Um, so coming back to this, this idea of differential privacy, that a, a lesson from differential privacy, I think, is that the, the, um, the, the privacy properties really depend on the, on the actual computation that you do and not on, not on the, the data that's produced as such. Um, so I think going forward, we really need to think about how to best present that information where it's available. Not all methods will have a, a, a differentially, um, will, will be sort of differentially private or you won't be able to put, a, um, put any differentially private bounds on them. Um, but some of them might do. So, so how, to, how to almost um, let, a, let a user compare these, these different almost incomparable privacy properties. Um, utilities are a little more straightforward. I mean, I, I think the, the thing we really wanted to do there was be as flexible as possible and just, just allow something where you could say, okay, I know what my analysis is going to be and I want to, um, I want to make an assessment based on, based on that. And it, having a very simple method may be appropriate sometimes or, or maybe it's not. Um, Okay, this is this is looking like it's going to be finished in a second. I'm aware we've got five or so minutes left. I think this took took slightly took slightly longer to run than it did in the in the uh, in the practice we gave. But there there we go. So let's return to this note that we were working. Um, and we we had a we have our um, um, our privacy score and. Our, our utility score, which is just a particular measure of, of how well a certain classifier performs. And we, so now we, we can hopefully achieve our, our goal of being able to plot, um, plot that trade off and, and see, see what that looks like explicitly. It looks like we're missing a, missing a point there. There should be one, one bit further down here. Um, not, not, Quite sure what happened to it, but anyway, I'm going to stop sharing at, at this point and, and go to the presentation where there's there's one that I one that we made earlier. Let's let's carry on with the presentation. Okay, there's what there's one we made earlier. So you you, you see we've got in this little inset the, the figure we had earlier, um, and it, it pretty much what. Um, we, we, we get what we expect really. So, so down here, there's, there's just, what, what do you get if you, if your synthesis simply consists of, of copying over columns? I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't score zero because a few columns, a few records turn out to be very similar, but it doesn't do very well. If you just resample everything, um, okay, the privacy is very high because you've completely scrambled everyone, everyone's data with each other. Um, but it's not. It's, it becomes. It becomes far less useful in terms of how well a classifier performs on real data when you train it on the synthetic data. And then, um, when you when you actually properly synthesize um, one or more of, of the columns, it, it turns out you can do you can do quite well on both. That is, you can produce data that, according to this metric at least, is 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 reasonably private, um, but it's also quite useful. Um, Probably the reason in this case is because um, the the data itself was generated. There was quite a simple generative model underlying the data, so it, it, it's not terribly surprising we could do we could do quite well with it. It, it may be that in in other cases, and depending on which metric you use, you'll 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 do do worse than that. Um, okay, and then the discussion we with, with the uh, these were the points I was I was mentioning a little earlier. Um, I think just th thinking how to how to think about privacy in this context is is just just quite hard. So we're going to do some thinking about that and and perhaps see about incorporating um, other methods. Um, and yeah, so that's that's the the the, the work that we we well sort of where where we plan to take the project next. 
Um, at the moment, there's a few stub, um, stubs of, of um, synthesis methods in there. There's, there's a couple that are actually actually work. Um, I think we're, we're just about starting to think about how, how, can we, how can we connect up with people that have, have real, world, um, real world problems and, and sensitive data sets and, and perhaps want to produce some synthetic data from it. Um, and another thing I alluded to a bit earlier was, okay, we've, we, 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 um, we ran the pipeline and, and sort of got, got into the looking at these scores and things, but, but it, would be, it would be very helpful to provide a guide as to how to interpret those scores and um, how, how to set parameters and so on between different methods. Um, we also mentioned that another way of viewing this problem is if, if I synthesize if I if I synthesize data and I'm running a model, in, in some sense I'm introducing introducing uncertainty into that model. Um, so there's a, there's a, 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 a stream of work about that. Um, so that's that's it for the for the talk and demo. Um, once again, the um, you can find the the work we've been we've been doing in this in this repo. Please do have a play with it if you if you'd like to. Uh, don't hesitate to be in touch. This is this is my address, but you can you can find us all in the um, in the list of participants. We'll also be hanging out on the, on the Slack channel. Um, and with that, uh, thanks to all the all the Quick team for making this possible. Also to um, uh, the SSI SSI fellows, uh, um, Sarah Gibson, who's who's also at the, on, on our team in the in the Turing, who helped a lot with with getting it getting this to work on Binder, and to uh, Ed, Ed Palmer for for some very useful discussions.